And we're like, this, this, we don't want him to do that. We want him to be, sound like these other guys. Yeah. But we eventually understood that that, that made us sound completely different. completely different than everybody else. So It adds so much meat to the sound. Like, yeah. if you're, to try to explain how Burning Dog sounds, it's very... It's hard because it's like, I don't know how. It's a, I mean, it sounds like dudes playing punk that have listened to metal for a long time, but that's like a cheap cop out. It's just, it sounds meaty. Like, well, I don't know. Like, I mean, j- j- you know, j- j- John was in, j- John, my best friend at the time, is still uh, in the other singer in Burning Dog. John was in a speed metal band called Global Chaos before Burning Dog, but he's been my best friend since kindergarten. So, like, we, we just, metal was always around. And we had some friends that were playing that, and we had some friends that were playing just punk. And, you know, like, Dr. No was probably our biggest influence, like, sure. how we wanted to play. Sure. But we couldn't do, like, we weren't good enough to, to, to do stuff like that, so that we just imitated it as close as we could. Yeah, but you're you know. staying away from, like, the palm muting and the picking that would be metal. Yeah. But yeah, you're yeah. still playing yeah, yeah. with, like, the, the seriousness and the tightness of metal. Yeah. In punk. Yeah. 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 Oh, I nailed it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> so, so, but, but, but Maury, you know, like he, like at first he was just playing drums and then he and I started, uh, like actually writing songs together and then he just started writing songs on his own. Like he wrote shoes. That's, that's Maury's song. Yeah. You know, one, of one of the greatest songs. burning yeah, dog yeah. songs. It's like my favorite song. You know, um, he, I mean, he wrote a bunch of, a bunch of the other songs himself too. So, you know, he helped like, you know, cause our song, our sound slightly changed over, over the years. Sure. We still had that, that, that same route, but, you know, we were starting to hear more pop songs, propaganda and stuff like that was super influenced to us. So we started adding that stuff into it. And that's what, that's how shoes came about pretty much. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. And, and Maury, like in your, in your current band, Out of Trust, you do such a good job with like the, like the melodies and so forth. Like, do you think that some of that comes from like the more traditional music you grew up with, like that you're, you're surrounded by with your family? Yeah, for the harmony parts, man, you know, I guess if you want to call it that, me doing those, <laughs> that's, the, you know, I guess that you can just say that, that you know, that that's something I learned, like, you know, from a kid who was really shy about it, but then, you know, by the time you get older, I don't know, it just came out that way. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and that crosses over to your other band, too. Um a band that should be fucking famous, and it it upsets me that you're not. The Dirty Rice yeah. is the fucking shit, right? Like you should be on <laughs> you should be on every reggae festival. Like, and I just feel like in the history of like reggae since like the early '80s, like hasn't everyone been waiting for like an all Samoan reggae band? Like, <laughs> it's a right. It's like a built-in crowd. That's not weird. Me saying that is that? No, no, no. Like. Uh-huh. Say that again? I, no, I you won't. hear you. I'm sorry. No, like, I think that it's so sick that it's an all Samoan reggae band. Like, I just think that, like, there's a there's people out there that would, like, really embrace that that just haven't heard you, you know? Why? Oh, we lost them. Huh? Oh, hey, yeah. hey. No, no, no. I, I can't. I, it's just that you sound really muffled. That's all. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to. I, I like sound really beautiful listening. in my headphones. <laughs> 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 nah, I just think it's a crime that like you guys should be fucking famous. Dirty Rice is the shit. I, you know that's cool. You, you say that, man. For me, it's like I don't know. It's it's how do you say it? Without saying it, <laughs> just say it, for dude. Me, for me, for I, I, I'd say for for, for for my preference as far as like you know that band. It just I'm gonna be honest, it, it, we sound watered down though. But then again, like you know, we only came together just because of, you know my other cousin's birthday. That's that's how that all started. Like you know, it was just getting together, a bunch of us to go play and you know and drink and get shit faced and. I, you know, none of us had any idea that this was going to blow up the way it did. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
that's that's the funny part, like you know what I mean. But as far as like you know the music and stuff like that, you know, it's just you can tell like a lot of us is, is you know that that's in the band. Like it's it's still a learning process for all of us. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I think it has it. It feels authentic and it feels like it comes from the right place, which is why it resonates with people that have heard it. Say that again. I'm sorry. I said, I said, I, I feel, I, no, no, no. I said, I feel like it resonates with people that have heard it because even though you think that it's a learning process, like uh, attacking like a, a classic style like reggae is very hard, but it's authentic how you do it and it comes from the right place. And authenticity is what makes people connect to music. Yeah. I think uh, for the most part, of, you know, for the old band, like, you know, it's just every, every time we play now, it's, it's, it's just, it's like a basic family reunion. So, you know what I mean? Everybody gets together and, you know, the, the way everybody comes together, I, I think it's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of, Old faces I haven't seen in like years, you know, if not years, you know, a decade. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just cool that, like, you know, you know, from back there, like, you know, us growing up, you know, being in the neighborhood, you know, all that shit, you know, and seeing everybody later now, like, you know, what they're doing here, like, you know what I mean? For you know, sure. We lost, mm-hmm. you know, some good people along the way, though, but, you know, I guess you could say that's life too, but then, you know, you kind of help celebrate them too. You know what I mean? You know if that makes sense. For sure. It does. Not forgotten. Yeah. You got some more, Joe? No. Maury, you're the man. I love you, Maury. Ah, you the man. (laughs) No, you the man. Hey, don't fucking hurt me, dude. Don't hurt me. Because you know, you know, you know, you know, Maury in his prime was a scary motherfucker, and he he still is. I'm gonna tell a scary. story about how you knocked out somebody at a show, Maury. All right, do it. Do, do it. it with Maury on the line. Go. So, uh, uh, Burning Dog played uh, Horshax, or uh, what was the other name, Zach? Uh, Deja vu. Deja vu. Yeah, and uh, somebody's somebody's playing after us, and Maury's on stage, and he does a stage dive. And he, okay, more more Samoan. So, for, for anybody listening, you know what Samoans look like. So, just imagine a Samoan coming down on you, and Moore's foot just hit the, this girl in her head, knocked her out. It was it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about uh, the Youth Brigade show, right? Oh, <laughs> that's right. We were playing. It was Youth Brigade. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. David, was, David the, first, the first missing twenty third show. Yeah. Yeah. David Ortega's girlfriend, that's right. So I got a Maury peacemaking story. So how about this? It was one of the first No Motive shows. No Motive's playing this house show in Wainimi. I think it might have been... I can't remember. It was someone I went to high school's house. Anyway, I'm just in the living room, drinking beer or whatever. These two guys, they got a little beef or whatever. And this fucking... This dude, I just... I don't know. They, this guy hit this dude, like cold cocked him. The other dude, like, drops his 40. They start, like, fighting. And fucking Maury, like, jumps in through the window. Like, <laughs> where the fuck did Maury come from? Like, he was, he like, he went from not being there to he's in the living room breaking up this fight. And it was like he jumped in, like, from the backyard through this window. It's like a one-story house and, like, broke up the fight. So, Maury the Peacemaker. Appreciate that. <laughs> that was I think like I that. know what party you're talking about too. Though. I, I'm, I don't. I hate to bring it up. I, I, I don't know if it's the same party when uh, one of our friends fucking shit in the bowl and then fucking put it on somebody that was passed out. I don't know if it's the same party, but it sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the, uh, the 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 pool table one? I think that was on Jackson Street. If yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, we were you you did Godzilla on the birdhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, think I, was, I don't know if I was shroomed out or, was or, or if I dropped or like was this <laughs> giant. I was fucked up. <laughs> Sorry, bro. There was this giant bird house. And you, and you know, the, you know the, the funny part about that story is though, fucking out of everybody in that fucking house, though, Joe was probably like the soberest one. Though, I was like, the only fucking, sober one. I think one, yeah. I was probably like with Joe. <laughs> it's like right after, just, right, right after I started stopped drinking. Yeah, it was in that first year. <laughs> but there's this giant birdhouse. 
and it's like Moy took it off the thing, like like somewhere inside the house, and took yeah. it to the front yard. And he's like, and he's like fucking Godzilla, <laughs> smashing the thing. So good. <laughs> yeah, Justin, Justin poop behind the couch. Yeah, I remember that. Oh fuck, dude, that was fucking uh, classic. Hey, Maury, thanks. I'm so glad we got you on. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for calling me. You know. I'm glad to hear you guys and all that good stuff. I'm glad you're doing your thing too, man. That yeah. podcast is fucking dope, man. Like, it, it definitely helps fucking the, the work days go by, man. I'd I, I be listening to it, man, like when I'm on at work. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, man. We'll talk soon. Yeah, for sure. Right. Good morning. Later. Right. Thank you. All right. I'll see you back at home uh, on the 20th, bro. All right, go to practice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. See you, bud. Real good. More yeah. cookies. Out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I should tell the cookie story. All right. Go ahead. Tell I, I, yeah. Uh, so, Maury, he, uh, so as I was saying earlier, he was Pika's cousin, and he's like three, four years younger than us. Um, So he was like this little kid, and we were all teenagers. And he's like 12 or whatever. But he wanted to hang out with us all the time. We wouldn't be like, no, go away, you little kid. You know, yeah. you scrub, you know, little grommet. And uh, he, he, we're all in Pika's garage. And he comes out, uh, over. He's, guys, he knocks on the door. Guys, I got the grub. I got the grub. There's like 15 of us. Yeah. We open the door. Okay, well, he's got food, so we'll let him in. Mm-hmm. He's got one cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I got the grub. <clears throat> one cookie. Did you split it? <laughs> we just took the cookie and kicked them out. So get, 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 <laughs> kick rocks, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you ever see anything without a trust or or old clinch fist stuff or or burning dog stuff that has a cookie in it, that's that's what that symbolism is. Is us making fun of Maury. That's funny. Nard fun fact. So, like the uh, uh, you want to get Andrew Hester? Let's call that fool. All right. Let's so, call like him. the. Uh, Stu, you're going to take this one? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Ring-a-ding-ding. <clears throat> Morty was like... Hello? Andrew, it's Stu. What's up, Stu? And Zach, and the legendary <laughs> Joe Rivas. What's, yeah. What's up, guys? What's How up, you Andrew? Guys doing? Hey, you can hear us good? Yeah, yeah, I can hear right, you guys cool. perfect. I think okay, that cool. Maury, Maury's, Maury does sound, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he's probably in a spot where there's a shit ton of people on their cell phones. It's yeah. Bad yeah, coverage. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, cool. Hit it, Stu. Yeah, dude, what's good? Nothing, just chilling, just chilling at home watching movies and stuff. Well, fucking, what are you, what are you watching, watching, dude? What? What are you watching? Are you watching Hard Ticket to Hawaii? Watch- <laughs> no, I was watching Mad Max Thunderdome. <laughs> oh, that's what's up, dude. Well, can't fuck with that. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. dude. So go ahead, go ahead and give me introductions, too. So this is Andrew Hester. He p- currently plays in Three Day Holocaust, and oh, he nice. plays in Flyswatter as well. Two great bands from Ventura. Ragers. Ragers. And, uh, yeah, longtime friend. I've been playing in bands with him for a really long time, probably like 10 years now. Yeah. And uh, it's cool to just continue to be playing together no yeah. matter what. Were you also in Blighted? <laughs> no. I'm just going through new LPs that I got. Oh. You gave me the Blighted hey, LP. you like it? I enjoyed it. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, I only listened to the one that had you on it. Sick. Because I'm just a Stu fan. Hey, right, dude. And uh, I just got the Three Day Holocaust LP a few weeks ago. The new one? Uh, whichever one they Narcissism gave me. Narcissism of Small no, It was, uh, no, I bred to slaughter. He got it at the, I gave it to him at the Nard. Be a release show. Yeah, oh, that shit is fucking tight, dude. It's tight. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Hell yeah. Thank you. Love it. And it's yeah. it's, it's, it's aesthetically rad looking too. Yeah, I mean, like uh, that was like the first record that we've, I mean, that I've ever put out, like LP wise. Like, uh, so it's like all DIY stuff. We did the insert like sitting at a dining room table, like. It, like we had like five different people, friends over there writing the insert on a piece of paper, went to Kinko's, copied them, you know? So like, 
it was pretty cool. This next one I really wanted to do, we're going to do on LP. Uh, we're going to do it on vinyl um, soon. Like we release, we didn't release one track off the new record to release it on vinyl when we do do a hard copy release. But we just wanted to get the mus- this new record out there. Yeah, finally. Cause I was really excited to hear it because those songs all rip. I've been listening to it like pretty often. Oh, Stu got that advanced. The advanced. It's on Bandcamp, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so we did. We digitally released uh, the new record on August first. Um, just because uh, we've been sitting on the songs for a while, so we just wanted to get it out there. We've been playing the songs for a year now, so we wanted just everybody to hear it. So we're gonna release. We're gonna hopefully by the end of or by the beginning of next year. Um, we're talking to a couple of people about releasing tapes, vinyls, and CDs. Sick, sick. So wh- why why did it take so long for that thing to, or why hasn't anybody pressed it? Have you guys been shopping around for that? Or? Uh, well, we've been shopping it around. Like a couple of people have pit, like were saying that they were gonna you know press it, and it just kind of fell through. Um, and that, you that should give us their it. phone numbers. We'll call them right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, yeah, why, why I, do you, why do you fuck up taking a pass on that three day Holocaust LP, fool? <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, it's kind of a bummer that we weren't able to get it on vinyl yet. But I mean, there's still time. Uh, I, when we released it, we had a couple of people um, interested in in putting it out. So we're hoping that that comes through but we're just well i mean I, we're playing shows grinding trying to make money to we're just gonna diy release it if anything you know pay it out of our own pocket okay. yeah you, know? you, you guys have been playing a lot of shows you guys actually just did a weekend with civil conflict right yeah yeah oh man those dudes rip so hard and they're just like the coolest <laughs> where like, do you guys go coolest, the coolest uh, 12 did, year olds uh, amazing <laughs> Uh, we did, uh, man, I forgot the first city that we did. Uh, and then we did San Jose. We did, it was, a. Uh, it was up North. It was near Fresno. Yeah. Uh, it so was a little a, NorCal just, swing. Yeah. Yeah. So we did, uh, that. And then we played a backyard show in, uh, San Jose with a bunch of rippers. Like the San Jose scene, it just so cool right now. Like they're popping off, like really cool, doing a lot of cool, like all age shows up there and stuff. Sick, so sick. Um, what was I gonna ask? What do you guys got coming up next? Uh, next we have a we have a couple shows. Uh, I mean, like, uh, we have two this month. We have uh, one in LA with uh, Clitorati, um, this band from Portland. Total, that they're so sick. Um, she, uh, the lead singer Amy, is actually uh, the person who. Uh, paid for half the uh, record that we, uh, the Bread to Slaughter record. She gave us half the money up front for the LP. She paid for half of it. So she's an awesome person. But we're playing with them. And then uh, we got a local show in Oxnard on the August 24th um, with Dysfunctional Chaos, Total Resistance, Truce, Civil Conflict, and Keep Fighting. Sick ass, it's sick ass sick lineup. Show. This episode is gonna be out uh, after that show, so let's, okay. Let's talk about how sick that show was, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Total, total resistance, totally worth the wait. They yeah. fucking yeah. killed it. Hell yeah, <laughs> Jacob, you fucking yeah. nailed it. Didn't miss a beat. Oh, dude, it was great to see Keep Fighting again, Angel and. Guys, yeah, uh, finally uh, I again. think maybe Three Day Holocaust stole the show. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking of course, yeah. Ragers, those new songs. Someone put it out on vinyl. The whole show yeah, on vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, <laughs> put out that whole show. <laughs> the whole show, the whole show it. was so fucking good. Yeah, and then this <laughs> show, Chaos didn't play, but James and the Mexican played. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, dude. That's great. Um, oh, so. You got a lot to I live mean, up to now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now make it happen. Exactly. Create now make it happen. Create memories. <laughs> Dude, did you, um, did you see? No, at that show though, you see that Joe Rivas stage dive. Oh, yeah. dude, Jesus, so good, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that guy like eighty? Like, what is he doing? Stage dive? How does he dude. look younger than all of us? <laughs> <laughs> fucking dude. Uh, I'm, I, I, yeah, 
I pit retired. It's after. not getting worse. We see how handsome your dad is, Joe. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all. It's a still up, man, It's dude. still uphill. But after after my <laughs> That's after, fucking asshole, <laughs> <laughs> dude, and hey, your brother. What? Just handsome motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. No, how fine are the Rebuses? Oh, dude. <laughs> I got the gut though. See. So. Yeah, but you're married. Yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> you still got a cute face. Yeah. Thank you. You want a kiss? <laughs> well, after the show. <laughs> Andrew, do you want a kiss? <laughs> what was that? Do you want a kiss, <laughs> do you want a kiss, want a kiss? Twat? This is Joe. Hi. What's up? The, hey. uh, the legend. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um, so you're also playing Flyswatter? Yes. Yeah. What's up with that? Flyswatter, uh, I mean, we went through... I was originally playing guitar in that band, and we went through a bunch of different bass players that you know, didn't necessarily work out. So I finally moved to bass and uh, we're recording our first uh, full length record coming up um, with Vince yeah. from Omega Point, which I'm really stoked on um, that. So we're going to have that coming up and uh, we're just getting ready to play shows, you know, well, we have been playing shows, but we're just, we're getting ready to uh, release. Uh, we're, we're actually talking about releasing this uh record that we're recording with vince uh on lp um so we're talking about doing that and trying to get you know the the ball rolling on all that stuff but uh, as of right now we're just just waiting to play shows and you know waiting to record i'm ready to fucking stage dive at those shows yeah dude i'm stoked i can't wait to play with some omega point and you know Dude, jam we'd love out it. Dude, we're gonna put out that split, dude. Cover each I know. of our songs. I know. I definitely want to do that, dude. I, I, yeah, I want. I want to. I want to do a bunch of stuff with local bands. Start recording. You know. Well, that's what um, you and I have been talking about lately. Is just doing a, another kind of nardcore compilation of all the current bands. Well, you know yeah, who I'll... is uh, on the line right now is the legend Joe Rivas, who recorded the In Control demo. <laughs> so, if you're looking for someone to record. I'm going to fuck these headphones yeah. up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Super interesting. Super oh, interesting. Oh, my God. But, yeah, yeah, we're li- I like, yeah, me, Stu, um, and I have been talking about putting out a comp of all current bands and, you know, doing one song on an LP and just kind of doing it all DIY, you know, just having all the bands help out, you know, we'll all record it in one place, you know, take up a... We're we're talking about doing it at Captain's Quarter and just you know taking uh you know some time out of him and um, Armand yeah and doing it all live yeah doing it all live filming it and uh, releasing it on LP and uh, you know and I want to videotape the whole thing from start to finish and put all that footage out just you know from listening to this podcast especially you know like just documenting all this stuff, you know, because I, I think, don't re- I think other than Rebus though, Nardcore is a, a scene better on vinyl than a uh, YouTube. Exactly. You know, I, we're and, not a yeah, handsome I, bunch. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all ugly, dude. <laughs> fan of, fan but, of um, handsome. Fan of the handsome man. But, but yeah, uh, you know, look, like uh, there are a bunch of bands out here that haven't recorded. You know, that I no, there's to... there's no time better than right now for yeah. that project. Like, if you talk about generationally from, like, okay, what is the youngest band that's kicking ass compared to, like, the oldest band that's kicking ass? The spread has never been bigger. No. And it's, yeah. it's like right now is the time is, you know, really right now is the time to document the scene. There's a band right now called Drought, mm-hmm. and the drummer of Civil Conflict used to play guitar in that band. Mm-hmm. And the drummer is 10 years old. Yeah. And they that's rip. straight Harley Flanagan shit. Dude, straight. That's yeah. ill as fuck. Straight up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, and especially right now, too, like, the scene is just, like, all these, you know, from any genre, you could go see a show. You know, there's bands like Several Vitals out here that's, like, a death metal band that's playing sick. with, you know, playing with Three Day or, or like, you know, Sordo you know power violence band there's just so many good bands playing right now combat shock they're just tearing it up that band rules super Man, hard shout out cola boy too yeah, yeah cola, cola boy. boy dude 
cold boy you know and i want to you know and he's i i want to get him included on putting like on this lp you know like you should be this, yeah how, of course you know everybody i want to get you know at like at, i talked to detoxy i talked to Ox, oscar from detoxy about being on it and he said he's super down those dudes rip too like there's so many good bands and in the 805 right now and it's also just, we we want a new ill repute song just one. Yeah. That'd be yeah. fucking no. sick. No. Yeah. A full LP. A, f- a full uh, well, LP. I'll take what I can get. Let's start with one song. <laughs> yes. That'd be awesome. I'll I, settle I for one, so- but I want I want a full full. I record. want a full record, but I, I think they're opposed to it. But I think just like the Nardcore 30 years later, like they did a couple songs on that. Yeah. It's been 10 years since then. It's yeah, time for it's one or two more songs. So... I totally agree with that. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think I got one more question. It's kind of, <clears throat> I'd say random, but Fly Swatter's playing a style of a hardcore punk or like melodic hardcore, whatever you want to call it, that I feel like, it, I feel like, and I want to know if you feel the same way, that it's a style of punk, which is like that fat record style, that melodic style. Um <laughs> that is dead in this generation or at least mip, like misrepresented or not played well. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't like, I, we definitely take that like fat wreck sound, you know, like Joaquin, he primarily writes all the songs and he, that, and that's a big influence uh, for him. Um, as well as like, you know, other bands playing it. I, you know, I don't, I don't know too many bands who play like that t- that style of music, especially locally right now. So, mm. I mean, I think we're the only ones doing it as of right now, but I, 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 I couldn't tell you. I'm not too much into that. That, like, I, I guess there's not a big scene of melodic, you know, punk or like that style of fat wreck punk in Ventura, or I haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Are you playing Dune Dead to that? Dune Dead to that? Dune Dead to that? Dune Dead to that? Single pedal Dune Dead to that? Well, there's no respectable double pedal of that beat. <laughs> <Just play>. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's way cheater on that beat. Yeah, that's so sorry, huh? <laughs> that's pretty much a sorry. I don't know. It, it can. I don't know. It depends on who's doing it, I guess. That is true. Yeah. But I don't know any. I don't know any punk drummers that play double bass, you know, double yeah, bass. None. That, I don't think that, they should. I do. And I feel like a fucking poser. Well, I don't play drums, so I don't know. Well, compared, well. compared to the legend, Joe Rivas. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to pack up. Yep. Yeah, That's man. Good, yeah. Well, you got to do that comp, dude. Now's the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're um You thinking about getting like, the ball. Why don't you can I don't know, have you considered crowdfunding it? Yeah, I mean, uh, it like m- not too far like it wasn't that long ago that I mean, me and Stu talked about it and we're kind of getting the ball rolling. I actually talked to Tony and Tony Cortez and he said he wants to be a part of it, so you know, I'm you know, trying to uh, I, we're trying to work out like details, you know, we want to, we want to s- start bands recording um, early next year. You know, um, I want to start thinking of what we're going to call it, you know, but uh, we've been writing out some things, um, you know, details on like what we're going to send to the bands and what we need and stuff um, coming up pretty soon. Um, but crowdfunding. Yeah. We, I was thinking about starting a GoFundMe or something like that for, you know, and also if, I was going to tell bands, you know, if, if you guys want to pitch in to get your own share of records to take on, you know, if you're going to tour or something and you want to have merch and that's the only thing that you have recorded, you know, um, we want to do that too. Um, so it's just kind of just trying to hammer out details and, you know, get it the best presented before we, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. I'll, t- yeah. I'll talk to Stu a little bit about it. Off, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll let you. I get some ideas because it should happen, and then and it shouldn't take that long to happen. No, it's got to be yeah, like, exactly. now or never. You know, like scenes are an ebb and a flow, and it's just it's firing now. So now's the time to document it. And you don't want to wait yeah. 
you know, you wait th- a year or two and who knows. Yep. So. Yeah, exactly. I, it's Poof, just, yeah, it's uh, this is, uh, this is our first, this is my first time doing a comp. So, you know, like all the help that we could get for this, you know, um, this thing would be awesome. And all the advice, you know, would be, would be, uh, really helpful because it's kind of, uh, you know, starting this thing is kind of, it, it's confusing a yeah. little bit. Yeah. We'll work it out. Uh, I'll, give awesome. us, I'll give us two. We'll figure it out. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. Thanks, Thanks for dude. having me. Yeah, man. Yeah, you dude. You guys have a great rest of your night. You too. Peace. Peace you, buddy. Yeah, See you ya. Too. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. All right. We're going to get Micah, who was the second bass player of Inga Troll. You guys... Hey, you make it ring six times so it's bad radio or what? What's that? I said, did you make it ring six times so it's bad radio or what? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm watching the Dodger game. Did it cut off? Are you home? Uh, I'm at work. Oh, um, word. Cool. Hey, uh, but, uh, this is Michael Wolf. He was the second base player of In Control, and you were here with me. You know me. I'm Zach. And then uh, Stu from Omega Point, and hey. the legend Joe Rivas. Stop it! <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, Micah, is it true that when you became a Patreon subscriber on 185 miles south, that your dick grew? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't donate that much. <laughs> <laughs> That was a that was a different perk. <laughs> that was the next next level perk. <laughs> that was not the answer I was looking for. Um, but, but yeah. So let me let me precursor on Mike a little bit. So we're actually going to call Chris Holden after you. And uh, oh, by the way, Chris Holden said, "What up?" <laughs> Isn't it funny when people do that? He was like, "He's like, when are you going to get me?" I was like, "I'm going to call you after Micah." He's like, "Oh, tell Micah what up." Like, so, so what up, Micah from Chris Holden? Oh, thanks. Yeah. I'm a nice guy. So Chris left the band, and we got you. And it was really important. First off, you learned stuff really fast. You, you're you a pretty fast learner with, like, learning shit, like, musically. Mm-hmm. And then also you had a fan. And, uh, yeah, that helped. <laughs> that helped a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was we were, we did a we did the In Control podcast today. Um, we only made it through 2001 because we just talked too much shit. But uh, <laughs> but basically, it's really interesting because like after we put out the seven inch and you were on the seven inch with us, we just play like a million shows in like mm-hmm. the year 2000 before we do a record. It's we're just playing everywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, it was all the time. I mean, I feel like we were going to just as many shows as we were playing at the time. I mean, we were driving everywhere up to Paso Robles and San Diego and PCH. I was as often as we did. Yeah, PCH was the best, though, right? Yeah. Definitely. Or no, Shea. Uh, no. Shea's better. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know that the, the headline uh, record show is pretty fun too. <laughs> you like the headline shows? That's that's something we talked about <laughs> in the show. Is like I, I'm not on board with like lights on, no stage. I'm just yeah, a, no, I'm it a, looks bad. I'm a prima, it, I'm, 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 I'm a prima donna, dude. Wow. Hey. <laughs> well, we played two shows that night. Didn't dude, I look that day. I look better when the fucking lights are a little dim. All right. Uh, I could agree. Yeah. No, are you you want to I mean, you want to play a show with like on the floor with the lights on? Yeah, for real. Dude, one of the best Never Meant shows we played, it was like that. Yeah? Kids went off. You could, like, see all the kids go off and, like, their faces. They're all, like, fucked up and they're getting micro and stuff. That's cool. I feel like people are more timid if the lights are on. Like, mm. you just wanted to to get a little more moody in there. But, hey, I'm, I'm just one dude. Yeah. Yeah. 
What which yeah, have bits and hacks of these shows were really fun too, now that I think about it. Yeah, the tattoo is ill. Were you <laughs> And there's that whole little tour thing we did. Oh sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well maybe are you thinking about that headline show that like it was supposed to be a record release, but then like the test press have a skip? Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Like a Do you remember cause, that? Because that was kind of a big show. <laughs> that was kind of like a good yeah. one. That was a good one. And then like we for whatever reason, like I don't even know how that fucking happened because I'm kind of a purist on test presses, you know, like, because now, like, labels press, like, 25, 50 test presses because, like, they can sell it or whatever as a test press. And, like, Mm -hmm. it's not a test press if it's more than 10. You know, that's, like, a limited run. (laughs) You know what I mean? And, like, I don't know what happened because we got the test presses, so and we got them from Bill Smith, and so we must have had, like, six of them. And there was a skip on one of the songs. And it's like, so you got to listen to every fucking record. And it's like, oh, my God, there's really a skip. Like, this sucks. Like, they have to do the record again, you know? And I think that I must have I must have hit them up and been like, dude, we have this, like, record release show. And I'm banking on, like, this money. Like, can you press me, like, 40 more of these fucked up records? And like, Yeah, you did do that. Yeah, because we had enough to sell. But we, like, put on the record cover, like, caution, this is, like, only a collector's item. It has a skip. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fucking weird. Damn, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, forgot- I do remember there being a skip and you, like, hitting them up about getting more, but it's, man. Yeah. I forgot, so about that pa- think about. I forgot about that Paso Robo show. Like... Who was that band that we played with? They were kind of popular for a minute. It was like a melodic band. Stretch Armstrong. We were playing football with them and shit. That's right. They showed up and they were like, I was wearing a Mystic Records shirt. And one of them was like, oh, shit, Mystic Records. That's sick. And then we're like, would you like to play football with us? Like, you guys guys are cool. We had a good time with them. Yeah, they were really, really nice guys. And and not someone that we would, like, run into generally. Were they? Yeah. Are they just a melodic hardcore band? Do you know us too? What's her? Stretch Armstrong? Uh, I feel like they're, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say. They were in that Fat Records ish yeah. Were they? Yeah. They were more hardcore than that, though, no? I don't think so. They were just no. like a fat band? I, I would agree. They yeah. weren't on fat, but. But they like had the, that same sound, yeah. The singer sang, didn't y'all? Yes. Okay. Weren't they more like a, I get them like, fucking confused with no redeeming social value. No, you can't get them confused with that. <laughs> I do, though. Dude, dude. hey, Micah, sing him, sing him a no redeeming social value song. You know one. Sing him what? A no redeeming social value song. You said he gets Stretch Armstrong mixed up with them. I don't know. <laughs> no, come on. 64, 64, I can't drink anymore. Come on. Uh, what what beer was that that put out the 64-ounce beer? It was like old English put it? No, no, I think that I think that sixty four. Yeah, remember? It was yeah, like, yeah. But we had the high life. High life put out a sixty four. That's tight. <laughs> yeah, dude. And they had a song about us all sixty four, sixty four. I can't drink anymore. They're on the right, yeah, yeah, documentary. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They were like the funny band. On yeah, that. their yeah. wiki says melodic hardcore. Melodic hardcore. That can mean anything. And they're Christians. Oh, that's what, I was that's what they are. Yeah, that's why they were in the go. bizarro scene. They're a Christian hardcore band. Yeah, yeah. I I would get them mixed up with uh, what was the dude with dreads that lived in Ventura for a minute? The strike. Strike anywhere. Strike anywhere. Uh, yeah, Thomas. Be- yeah. Because they're kind of like a melodic hardcore band, but then that guy like. But they're definitely not Christian. He kind of sings and kind of yells. Yeah. No, but like that well, style I mean, of music. I mean, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Good riddance would, I mean, although a Fat Records band, but they don't sound like any of the other Fat Records bands, most of their songs at least. I would say the second and third albums sound like Fat Records. Because it's like that. Some songs. That's super produced, like, uh, who's that guy that used to record all those bands? Do that, 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 Ryan Green. Yeah, they have that Ryan Green sound. So, but I'm not trying to lump in Good Riddance with Bracket. They're obviously better. Bracket was pretty good, though. Bracket was pretty good. You know who's good as Snuff? Dude, No Use for Name was the best. No Use for Name is so good. Best on fat. Yeah. Sorry, we're getting off track here, Micah. Micah, you think No Use for Name or Good Riddance is better? Uh, I usually go for Good Riddance, but I do like No Use for Name quite a bit. I go Good Riddance, too. I go Good Riddance because I think No Use for Name has, like, 
one classic rock record. Oh, yeah. yeah. But there's hits on every single one of them. There's hits on every record, but Leche Con Carne is like the yeah. LP. Yeah. And then Incognito is an EP. It's not an LP, right? So I'm saying one classic. I'm saying Good Riddance, first two records, classic. And the new one. <laughs> the new one's so good. Yeah. The first two records are a classic. They're all good, but I'm super biased. I know you are. Because <laughs> I lived with them for... Yeah. So, uh, Micah, tell me a control story. You got any? Got any what? Do you have any control stories? Any good stories? Oh, man. Nah. <laughs> 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 I was just, like, thinking about it. I was like, God, this is so much shit. But, uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I like. I definitely the, the stuff I definitely remember the most is um, is that little like tour we did with Kelly Riddles up north, and just like sleeping in the van, and it was just kind of a nuts time uh, going down to the mine shaft, and some shitty mining town and stuff. But that was the best. Like, uh, what town was that? That was fun, man. What town was that? That mining I was town. Trying to remember. I wonder if we could even remember if we like saw a map. It was somewhere like a couple hours north of Sacramento. And Killy Rattles, they reached out to us. And this is I I read an old interview or something that like reminded me of this. This is really rad what they did. They had a bunch of bands on the West Coast that they liked. And they like reached out to us and they're like, choose a few shows you want to play. Don't be greedy. <laughs> and like we <laughs> chose like three shows. We chose what, Santa Cruz? And that show, yeah, like that super, yeah, sure. that super NorCal show, and like yeah, I thought there was one more. There, there had to be one more. Maybe, maybe like we did yeah. PCH or some shit. Um, but that that show was amazing because like yeah, we're up in like this old like mining town. Oh, you know what? We played Gilman too, and that was fucked up. That was the yeah. first. That was the first time we ever played Gilman. Um, we took the That's pi- right, Gilman. we took the picture <laughs> for the seven inch there, which is cool. But we played to zero people, and like the, yep. the, the do you remember the sound man coming up to us after? He's like, "You guys are the first band that ever started on time in the history of this club." <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, we're, like, <laughs> we're like, "Can we get a do over?" Like, no one was here. Like, can we just play now? The only person was the only person there in Spotter Seven Inch was the bass player for What Happens Next, and he came up to me and said. He liked the set, and I felt really stupid because I was wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and then the drummer of that band said we were too overproduced. So. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's Max, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What are you gonna do? Oh no, maybe that's not. Yeah, but then, <laughs> dude, we played that that weird NorCal show, and then after, do you remember we were like, okay, we have to drive all the way back from somewhere that's like two hours north of Sacramento. But somehow we still go over to someone's house and we're swimming in a lake. Like, oh, no hurry. Like, what the fuck? We're going right. dri- to drive home Didn't like 12 they have, hours. Like, a lake in the back of their house? Yeah, we were in this They're lake. Like, and, yeah, and it was like unnaturally <laughs> warm. And we're like, why is this lake so warm? And the guy's all duck shit. <laughs> and like, and we were all like confused. Like, we didn't ask him because it's like, Okay, if it's really warmed because of duck shit, like I'm gonna fucking get out of here, you know? What is so soft down here? I know. I'm just wondering. <laughs> like, ah, uh, it's weird. But uh, yeah, dude, that was a fun loop. That was a shit. That was fun, and just always playing the the PCA shows were always just tons and tons of fun. Yeah, and going to those ones too. Like that little stage, it couldn't have been higher than. Like six inches, right? Right, a shoebox. Yeah, yeah. Or I mean, a shoebox is maybe higher. Like it was straight up just a hazard. Like the stage was a hazard. Like we should just be playing on the floor. Like I remember one time we did a nard pile on someone, and I was like on the bottom, and like that six inches, like half my fucking leg was like on the stage, and half of it was not. Yeah. And I was on the bottom of the dog pile. I was like, dude, my leg's in a snap. Like, this sucks. Like, I'm going down tonight. I'm going to be like, fucking, why me? Like, you know? Dude, that was the best fucking story I ever heard. <laughs> oh, Ray Ray. It was 
was me and Droman that carried him down the stairs that night too. Oh, it was Joe Remus and Droman carried Why Me down the stairs that night. Yeah, I I hope that okay. Let, I can talk about this right now because there's been a couple people that have gotten butt hurt on podcast shit, and uh, dude, this show is a hundred percent done with love, and I hope that comes across because especially oh, for yeah. like like Fred telling the Why Me story. It's only because we love Ray Crevice. That guy was fucking down for his shit. He was so friendly. Mm-hmm. Every time he met him, he played in a band that like represented himself well and, yep. and did it well. Both, right? Yeah. Crevice and shot in the face. Yeah. And uh and, and coma. And coma. Yeah. Well, and yeah. coma. Yeah. And then he was also an amazing artist. Um with still with, is an amazing artist. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he moved away, so I, I don't know him. I can't vouch for him, but but yeah, I mean, like up until that Sound and Fury that they did in Wainimi, I mean, he was doing beautiful spray paint art um, and selling pieces. So everything on the pod is done with love. And if you get butt hurt, go fuck yourself because this is coming <laughs> from like the nicest place. I, I'm I'm really trying to do my best to be nice and positive, right? And so I don't know if you get butt hurt, what, I don't know what to do for you. You know, Just take some tissues. Yeah, All right. I mean. Not a- I like to kiss anyone's ass either. So. No, I mean, like, a couple people reach out. I try to be nice, like, explaining it, and then they, the butt hurt continues, so it's, like, not worth the time. <laughs> well, you know, there's some of these things that have happened over, over, over the years. People have, you know, whatever animosities that they have with other people or, or with individuals or with the whole scene or whatever. So there's a lot of... Uh, pent up frustration that that, that that comes out and I'll further add that you know you, you you've said this many times that you you can uh you wanted you wanted to tell some guy like hey you should have do this thing on your podcast and you're like well why the fuck don't I do my own so these people should do their own yeah if, if they want if they want their version represented then they should yeah, but also make their like, own podcast or try to get on with you and try to try to feed their their part right of the story or, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and, and, and and we all make mistakes. I mean, some of this shit happened. You know, like when we did mine the first time. Like I, I messed up all kinds of dates, and I want to oh. listen back to it. I'm like, God, oh no, that was eighty two, not eighty one. You yeah. know, stuff like that. But you no, know. we mess up on I'm, every podcast. You're guaranteed to get yeah. at least one thing wrong. Oh yeah. But on the on the the flip but side no, of that, Joe. I actually really do want people to write me and let me know who they want me to have on because yeah. I don't always know. I'm just one guy, you know, and, and the scene is vast and old and wide. Yeah. And I want, I'm trying to paint a picture here. And so I need help. You, you know, want to do the discord of podcasts for this for f- scene for Nard and then, and also in San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, and we'll branch how we branch. And I'm trying to have a little bit of fun as well. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, he's, I'm historically trying to document this area, um, which is why, like, we're doing serious interviews with, with people from yeah. the area, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but yeah, if I miss anyone, obviously I'm trying to get everyone on. I don't have all the time. And I'm trying to do everything in person, which is harder, you know? So. Yeah. Although this phone thing is working out, Micah sounds great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Micah sounds great because Mike is a fucking the man. But I, I, it's it's just better to do pods in in person, you know. So yeah, or yeah. To, to attempt to. So, but uh, yeah. Aren't you are you glad to, that you were online to hear that whole diatribe? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry to bother you with that. Hope you brought brought your own soapbox. This <laughs> <laughs> is the stage from the. Oh, oh that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. All right, I'll talk to you soon, bud. Yeah. Right, see ya. See ya. Right. <laughs> Wu Tang's playing with Ween. Wu Tang and Ween? Well, it's a fast lineup. It could be anything now, right? Better put Cola Boy on that fucking lineup. <laughs> or like Ghost Main. Dude, <laughs> what's that? That shit is just like this. Rapper, this white rapper, and uh, 
Uh, the drummer was in Crucial, and he plays drums for them, and they're fucking huge. Really? They're like little. They play. They played Gathering of the Juggalos. Dude, I want to play Gathering of the Juggalos so bad. You guys could. I feel like of all bands, you guys could. I think. I think I, I'm gonna try my hardest to make it happen this year. Cool. Well, I submitted. I submitted last year, and I was too late. And they ca- to play? yeah, and they kind of gave me like the lowdown on here's what you should do to get on. It's like I'll be prepared for next year. They like send a YouTube video. I was like, well, I got a couple good ones. Dude, you know, like we're not any lacking of the, in any YouTube of the tavern videos. shows. Yeah, yeah. It's like here's what I want, but I just want Juggalos jumping on me. Oh, yeah, you know. So, would you spray them all with Fago, dude? Whatever they want, man. I'm I'm, I'm a man of the people. <laughs> just <laughs> here to deliver. Oh, dude. <laughs> you were recording all that. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Holden. What up? What up? Uh, what's going on? What are you doing? I'm just hanging out, not being a dad like you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, this is Chris Holden. He's the original bass player for Inga Troll. Uh, you're here with me, Stu from Omega Point, and the legend Joe Reeves. Sure. All right. It's cracking. Hey, buddy. What's going on? It's chilling, man. How's life? Really fun. Yeah? Are you high right now? Hell no! Okay. So, old, original, early, in control stories, huh? Yeah, dude. It was, it. it was a short time, but man, it was a crazy, it was a crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> Spit it out. Well, I mean, I guess, like, so, I was in a band called Eyes Full of Rage with, uh, with Adam Hanlon and Micah, shout Michael out, Wolf. Shout out Adam Hanlon. Yeah. Uh, Justin Kurz. Yeah. And that's uh, right. Paul Sylvester. Yeah. And I was like, we used to just always kick it over at Micah's house every day. And we just started playing. And we recruited Paul in to play drums. And I was like, very, very not talented. But they're, you know, Micah and Justin, they had, they had lots of skills. So we had a couple of good songs. And, I don't know why Zach was implied to ask me to be in control because I was probably the worst bass player that <laughs> the Nara scene's ever seen. But, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think that we don't got to look much further. I, I liked your attitude, dude. I, I wasn't going to battle you on writing songs or anything. So I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> I was just like, wait a minute, what do I play? All right, let's try to figure that out. You had kind yeah. of complex shit thrown at you too. Hell yeah, dude! You were, like, you were writing good stuff. I was. I'm kind of glad that you got like a competent bass player in after me, so you, <laughs> your music could actually like flourish into what it could be. <laughs> 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 but uh, so Zach, you know, he's like, all right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna like build band camaraderie. So we like we go on like this camping trip to Pismo Beach, and. Uh, that shit was like three days of craziness. That's real. That was yeah. Before we it's did the probably band. the closest I've ever been to being arrested in the United States. You got a DUI, huh? Yeah, yeah. It well, was me. It. it was me, Chris, Tony, and Ryan. We yeah. went to Pismo Beach to see if we could bro down before we did the band. And there was a lot of crazy stories, and maybe we don't need to go into too much, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it was definitely fun. Well, the- and, uh, <laughs> Every night got like progressively worse. Huh? <laughs> Cause you remember, uh, yeah, Chris, you remember that sliding scale? Like the first night we're like, Oh yeah, we're, we'll get some beer. But I mean, we're fucking, nice. I don't know we're, how Ryan, we're Ryan 19. for death, like a G, like we're standing out in front of the gas station. I'm like, there's no fucking way we're getting beer. And then the next fucking 10 minutes later, this guy's got like a 12 pack, like a case, and we're just rolling back. Like, here we go. Yeah. He, he, he was a master of pimping beer. <laughs> master. Yeah. And, like, the first <laughs> night, we are like, ah, fuck it. Like, we got to be on the down low, right? We got to, like, drink in Dixie cups, you know? Yeah, the second night was not like that at all. <laughs> no, well, the second night, we weren't, like, all the way out, though, because, like, we're like, hey, everyone knew we were drinking. It's cool. Like, we'll just lay low and drink bottles, you know? I thought it was only two nights. I thought the nah, second we one saved was th- The third night was fucked, dude. Yeah, that one was crazy. I mean, I was like, or did you go home so tonight? Really? One of you guys went home tonight. Tony early. did. Tony did. That's right, because the third night is the Thank Limp Chris dude. night. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for. Uh, so, yeah, but yeah. It, was, it is. <laughs> yeah, the third night. The third night was fucked. So yeah, that's that when was everyone because all the the people came. All those Christians came around with the scavenger hunt. Yes, you that was, that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and we were like, you were gonna like fill a sock full of sand and like throw it at them. 
don't remember. Anyway, so the band fucking goes, right? And that's our original yeah. lineup. Do you remember the first show? Yeah, I mean, we played Laser Star. I remember, like, my fucking noob ass, like, didn't bring another fucking string set. And, like, I was warming up on my bass and, like, fucking donk. There goes the string. So, like, we had to borrow, like, some other band's bass. And it was, like, tuned all crazy because they, like, they played, like, really low. It was, like, some other, like, younger, like, hardcore band kids. I think it might have been, like, Whatever It Takes, maybe, or one of those bands, maybe. They wouldn't have tuned or, like, low. Like, Gynecologist or something? No, Whatever It Takes. But, like, I don't, I don't know. know. I can't remember what those guys were called. Or, like, what, like, the names. Like, it wasn't. Warriors time. They were they they hadn't started yet, but it might have been like their like original band formations, like that that era of kids, like Javi and his homies. Well, he was I in one of t- he was in one of the takes, and then uh, gynecologist was White Trash Willie's band. Yeah, it was it was one of them. They only the bass, which is awesome, but it just didn't you know. But it was still like so much. Like everybody was so hyped for like when in control like started like for that band. Like for me to even be there was like crazy, and I felt you know I kind of maybe I did like. So like I saw Rage, you were like playing. We had a couple of good songs on like a one show we played, but like that that name was like kind of bad or something. I mean, I know where it comes from now. We didn't know at the time. I think Todd was just chilling with us one day, and he's like, "I saw Rage would be a sick name for a band." We were like, "Yeah, that would be," but like we didn't know it was like a screwdriver song. So like people <laughs> like people got down on us about like the name of our band. We didn't know what to do. So I kind of like fucking. So you changed the name to Dead Serious. After the side yeah, by but side, then, like, but then like just and then you were like you just you're in control. So obviously I'm gonna go like in control. But anyway, the first show, like, fools were so hyped, and like everybody was just. I mean, Ryan, like Ryan was like born to like sing. Like I mean, dude, like that, that was like a a dream team of you guys, you three, and then just be there. But uh, it was awesome, man. I mean, just oh, fuck, dude. Like seeing like I think it was Laser Star, right? Like seeing it from that angle is like so. I don't know, like better, like different, and just awesome. So. Played the first show. We did the we did the demo then, or did we go play Sacramento then? We did the demo because Sacramento was a fucking crazy story. We're gonna tell that one in like five minutes, I think. <laughs> okay, so the demo came out a week before our first show. Okay, so we did the demo first because I remember yeah. I like got sick or whatever and like didn't go play the demo, which is probably better because I don't even know if I could have played like. No, you played time. on the you played on the demo, Chris. But I know I sang on the demo because I'm in the fucking whatever that like the best damn place in the fucking scene. That's me. Didn't That's me. Maybe I'm, pretty not. Sure, Maybe I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I was sick and Tony played the bass. Okay. Maybe on the, on the demo. And you just did backups. And I did. I did. I did. We did that. that, that okay. That lyrics so right our, sec- our second show ever is Sacramento, California. Hell yeah! So we mobbed the sack town. I think like Chris, uh, Pat Grande is driving. I'm pretty sure he drove us up there, right? And I remember him getting. So we get up there. We like play and it was cool, but um, just the crazy thing is like the night like after that show, like that was a fucking awesome show. And like, like that night we like just ended up in like, like some random part of like Sacramento. Like, well, we didn't sleep. Yeah, we were like so we were like cruising on Mikey Hood, right? Is that yeah. Like, so we're cruising around like in the van, and he's just like cruising around Sacramento, like. Yo, this is like the shit part of town. Or like, yo, this is like over here, and we got like, stop at Del Taco, and like one of his homies is like getting like soda out of the water dispenser or something. Yeah. And they start fighting the employees. Yeah. And then uh, we all jumped in cars and drove away, and that was my. I first can tell ever. a story. It's I a good see. story. It's a good story. So, <laughs> so it was actually Mikey Hood. He he got like a Sprite in his like water cup or whatever, right? Yeah. And the security guard comes up and tries to, like punk him, like, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, well, I'm drinking a water, like whatever. And he's like, no, I saw you like take <laughs> soda. Bubbles. And then like, he, in that shit. and he kept like, he kept like, he wouldn't let him go. And it's like, dude, the guy literally stole like two cents from you. Like, let it go. Like, let it go, dude. And so finally, like everyone mobs outside and it's like, well, fuck that. Like, and so it's like Sacramento hardcore. There's like, I don't know. There's in control plus like 10 dudes. Right. And they're oh, all, they're crazy. all, and they're all pretty gnarly. And uh, yeah. and like and Del Taco and we mobilized like it's like a fucking like a 1940s gang fight and fucking dude, we no dude we, like, so here's what happened I remember, I, remember, I remember this so well, let me get to that point okay so there's a guy because back then there was always a guy like video cameraing on like a big ass video yep, camera yep, yep. right it's before they got small <laughs> and he's like videotaping and everyone's like yelling at each other or whatever and so this fucking fat chick jumps out and like mushes the video camera and then someone socked her and then this guy jumped out of the del taco fray like he was a del taco employee and he looked exactly like freddie mercury and he was fighting in like a 1920s boxing stance 
He was like, bring it on, you know? Yeah, like straight knuckle up style. And then he just got rat packed. <laughs> that's like it was Del Taco versus Sacramento. No, the workers were really fighting. It was crazy. And there was someone with a giant camera videotaping it too, which is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then and then so, like yeah, so and the, the cops cars roll, the cops and came. We jump in the cars and like fucking take off and I'm just I'm now on my first ever like high speed like car chase with the cops. And we got away. Everyone got away. Yes. Not one person got caught. <laughs> And everybody just rendezvoused back at, like, these, like, brick apartments where, like, all these, like, I don't think they were, like, Nazi skinheads. I think they were, like, worker skinhead dudes. No, like, no. no, no, no. Those guys are all. Like, like war zone skinhead cats. Like, yeah. But they were, like, all of them. Like, everything was just a crew of them. And they we just stayed up all night. And then. Yeah, was, it, was so, was it was so entertaining. Like, because we were just riding around with, with in the van. Yeah. And, he, and he'd, he'd just be like, fuck it. And then just run over a bunch of people's trash cans. <laughs> you know? Like, it's so fun. And then we're on top like, of some roof, like just chucking rocks at cars and shit. At it the was time, like, my, my fucking uncle's like the city council would be mirror. It's like, I'm out in Sacramento about to get arrested because my kid's fucking smashing over trash cans. I'm like, this is bad. So I shouldn't be here. But yeah. uh, so we, we drive home on no sleep and like Pat got like, I was, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, like, like, yeah, it's yeah, like we stay, we stay up all night. We're like, <laughs> well, it's 7 a.m. We should probably drive home now to Nard. And then yeah. fucking, we all fall asleep in the car, and Pat has to drive the whole way. And he's yeah. trying to get the speed. No, 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 no. He got a ticket and didn't drive after like an hour. I had to drive yeah. the rest oh, of the way. Oh, word. word. <laughs> so we got there. It's all good. And then, uh, yeah, so you were like, and then you were kind of like working at Pat Holden's at the time for my dad. Yeah, his dad's liquor store, Pat Holden's liquor. What's, yeah, what's the cross streets? Store. What's the cross streets? Ninth and A. Ninth and A. Downtown Oxnard. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and so you know, we were just I started college in Northridge, and we tried to try to make. It. I think we we're gonna have a we were gonna have a show at uh, in Shore. It's like the Thugs not like the cops closed it down before we got to play. Oh yeah, that was for Micah's birthday. Yeah, it, we played we played in Tony's living room for Micah's birthday, and yeah, yeah the cops shut it down. And then, mm-hmm. uh, but it got we in control got to play. We played a full set. It got broken up during the impoached because when the cops showed up, we were playing. We started playing Breaking the Law. <laughs> so <laughs> stupid! So stupid! Hey, Chris, yeah. tell the story about. Uh, okay, so you're in Northridge, and I think this is like. I think you're out of the band. It's like right after. You oh left no! The band. I, I work, yeah, I have this. I have this noted down. When you guys played the the, the, the no no no, no. Party? I, I, I want to get oh. to that, I want to get to that one. But do you remember <laughs> you? Okay, in Northridge when you were in college, you were like living with a dealer. And you yeah, fucking yeah. got robbed. And I was at, we, I would have been like tied up and fucking like assaulted, but I think I was at that. That was the weekend of that show you were just talking about in Tony's fucking living room. Okay. And I was in Oxnard. Because they, so, yeah. they broke into your. And they took the in control fucking demo from me. Yeah. And I, and I, and <laughs> they broke, they broke <laughs> like in. Like one claim to fame. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they broke into your apartment in Northridge and tied yeah. up, tied up everyone. Yeah. Fuck Rob, yeah, I came Rob home them. from you from we went to we were at TDN or TI, I mean, and I left and went to Northridge and I find that's what I, I didn't find them like tied up, but like the neighbor this chick was like, yo, like come here. And she told me what happened. Like it's like an hour, like two hours before, like while well, we were having lunch, you know, or whatever. So it was crazy, but yeah, and they, but, yeah, and they, they, t- the they took the much. they took all the drugs, the money, and the in control demo. <laughs> yeah, yep, it was in my C D player. I was trying to learn the bass cards probably. I was like, dang, I gotta practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay and then like a year later you're like styling now you're like you made friends in in northridge you're going to all these fucking college parties and shit and you're like you control's got to come out here and play it's gonna be a banger right and so we come out to play like some frat party right but yeah and it was, unfortunately i wasn't like in charge of it i probably would be a lot better off but i guess it took forever to start and then once you guys actually started the cops showed up like right as you started going into the Nard show, right? Like, yeah, we played with it was like a couple rappers, and like when they were done <laughs> playing, right. when they were done playing, they left with the PA. We were like, what do we do? But then there was a hey, couple, well, there was a couple guys in the show that were in that LA hardcore band, Another Lost Cause ALC. Okay. I think the singer was there, and he's like, oh, dude, I live like 20 minutes away, I'll go get a, a PA, you know? So he drove home to get a PA came uh, back and this is like you. that's a long time like to wait oh, between yeah. bands like oh it's an hour to have some fucking punk band set up that you don't even want to hear them play you know <laughs> and so like the guy gets back we do like sound check we're doing sound check we're loud so the fucking cops show up 
because it doesn't sound like fun party music anymore, you know. <laughs> and then like there's a there's like an MC guy of the party, and he like, and like the cops are there, and they're like, okay, you can play one song while we're kicking everyone out. <laughs> So they're kicking like three hundred people out of this like, no, 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 no. music. No, and, then, no, and, we, and we play the Nardo, right? But do you remember what the guy said? He's all, "Yo, yo, yo! This party's been out of control, but here's in control to play for you on your way out. Everyone's got to go." <laughs> so, uh, I felt bad because I think you guys, you know, I've been bummed on having to get off work and not being able to play. But that that picture, that that party did spawn the party to puke a uh, flyer that came out very quickly after that. That's right. Chris got shit faced and puked on a bush, and we got the photo of it. And we put it on a flyer. No, I'm sitting next to Ryan, and Ryan's like next to me, like, oh, oh he's thumbs up. I think up Tony had a good time that night too, if I remember right. So, so, me and Tony yeah. were doing jello shooters all night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean i remember that show because you hyped it up to us like hey you're gonna come play this battle of the bands the winners and you get it's a bunch what it of was and i was like a new jack in that shit at the time so i didn't really know that it was gonna be like that like, if it was on if you know if i was putting it on it would have been my right <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway. you got any other memories chris <laughs> i mean no uh, i mean yeah i was like I, like i just kind of like uh those old laser star shows. Like I always think about like, man, I, I'm half of me is like really happy that not everybody has like their stupid cell phones out during those shows, like ten Yard fight and like blood for blood. And all they used to like, I know the Yard fight got recorded, but man, can you imagine some of the recordings of those shows that we had those like you can have them today? Like yeah. those pits were fucking like the, the funeral oration when they played and like, no one even knew like that. Like they don't ever really hear that. Man, they were so good though. I still think like have that seven in somewhere, but um, like that pit was amazing, like all night long too. And it's like I thought, like I, in the in like the realm of Oxnard history, like Laser Star is like shows are kind of like not forgotten at all, but not really mentioned and like as like the great ones. But I think there was like two or three really solid years there, like the late like ninety seven and ninety nine. And that shit was going off like once a month, and it's like you think about it, like a, a punk show like at a place where people were playing laser tag, and like, like how did you guys pull that shit off? I have no clue. But that was a fun ass venue to see uh, see shows for those two years. Yeah, and that pole was wild. So it was like oh, yeah. it was kind of like a, like a hometown advantage, you know? Like you know how to like like you know you know your arena, so you know how to like dodge the pole. Well, it kept it kept all the like the ninja dancers out there too. So it was like just circle pit all day because that's all you could do is just run around the pole in the middle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what you uh, I don't know. Also, like I want to say like. Uh, I kind of have like a, an, not an insight, but like I get to see kind of like, like the scene now, like from a different angle. Cause I don't like, really obviously have time to like go to shows, even like when you guys played at, um, uh, fucking tavern, I wasn't able to go just because I just had my daughter, but there's like, it's still, it's still popping in Oxnard. Like, you know, don't, don't sleep and don't think that like, you know, like, I know like, you probably don't, like, you know what's going on, but like they got shows going on here nowadays and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Like they got, there's one like there was like someone's house over on like north side, you know, like they have like the skate park like in the bowl. Like it's a pretty, it's you know. Now nah, it's popping now more than ever. Yeah, and totally. They, they're doing the kids are doing good, man. That's why a couple, like maybe like a month ago I said some shit about like over twenty one, like that kind of sucks. And like some people were like, well, the other one the kids around went out, but it's like, dude, if it was like if like we didn't have a, we didn't have later star, we were back in our day. Like, I mean, we a lot of us, I would, you know, who would have known if anybody would have been able to get into it, so. Right. Remember the kids when you guys are, you know, because <laughs> I got, you know, like one of my, like my fiance's like little, uh, like kind of like, not nephew through blood, but like relation kind of is uh, Jim Callahan from uh, the repute son, Luke. And that kid puts it down for the, uh, for the nard, you know, and like he's down, that kid knows a lot about punk. And he's like, he's, he reminds me of like a lot of the kids that I mean, we grew up, but like, you, you know, Todd and you, you guys and, He's not musically as talented as you guys were, but like he like loves the music, but just like and there's some, there's a lot of kids that are still like that nowadays, and that's good. So I tell them to listen to this podcast, so hopefully they're listening to me because they can learn something from us old cats, I guess. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> or, or hopefully they don't listen too much. And, and I always tell pave, those kids, pave your own you know path. Hey, when I'm like in high school, like I'm a yeah, high school teacher, so I tell them all the time, like hey, you know, I get it, you don't like school, whatever, like fuck it, like I mean, I get it. But you know, if you like music, like learn how to ro- like do you- learn how to play and or learn how to like roadie, like learn how to do the board, learn how to record people. Like there's there's a living to be made in the music industry, and like you can do what you love to do. You just gotta learn how to do the skills to do it. And 
some of them are just like, shut up, old man. Like, I just want to play Fortnite, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, all right, guys, whatever. I tried. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you, like, asking me and, like, uh, I don't know, like, oh, I would just want to say, too, like, I really, you know, obviously I have a, you know, a pretty good life. Like, you know, I made it to go to college and get out of the band was probably the right decision. And, you know, like, as it came out, but, I wish, I just wish I could have gone like in the van around the country with you guys. I don't know if I could have made it because I'm kind of a bitch. I don't like being dirty. I, I don't know if I could have given the van like from spot to spot. But damn, dude, I wish I would have gone on one of those, one of those fucking uh, tours because I'm sure. You would have been a fun guy to have around, that's for sure. <laughs> it would have been nonstop. It would have just been, I mean, if, if the camping trip was anything like the fuck, we wouldn't have made it home alive, I don't think. <laughs> All right, dog. All right, Chris. <laughs> All right, Zach. All right, talk Later. to you soon. Bye. See ya. Later. <laughs> Fuck, that's so yeah. funny, dude. Yeah. That's the original bass player you control, dude. He's Chris stoked. Holden. He's the man. Stoked. Fucking, that's a dude. Anything you guys got on to wrap it up? Fuck. That was fun. That was fun. That was huh? a lot of fun. I enjoyed yeah. that. Let's do it again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You guys have fun? Yeah, I did. Yeah. We yeah. got some, uh, I got some other people we can call. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah, and then if if anyone's listening, and you want us to talk to anyone specifically? Shoot, shoot, yeah, yeah. Shoot, yeah. shoot an email, and and we'll we'll get them on the reach line. Reach out to one of Make us. It happen. May, maybe just reach out to Zach since yeah. it's his thing. But well, just reach out to the the legend Joe Rebus because he's got more people in his phone than either of us. <laughs> so <laughs> he's he's flashing some legends, dude. He kind of is. Yeah. And I, I want like, I want to uh, I want to do homework before I get to them. So yeah, I try to. Let's try to do my homework, dude. He's he would he would love to do it though. Cool. So, St- uh, Stu, do you feel like you've been well represented on this podcast? I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do Good you? Question. I do. I do. Yeah. Joe, I have been very well represented. I'm really glad you wanted to talk to Maury. Cause, yeah. Because I love know. Maury. We'll get Pika next time. Yeah. Pika and Forest. Pika and Forest. Yeah. yeah. That'd be good. Maybe we can get a hold of Chuck. Yeah, I want to do Chuck because um, Chuck Schultz. I'll repeat Chuck. Yeah. Um. Because. Chuck's like the new guy in ill repute, but he's been in the band for like twenty years. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and his history is long. Yeah, he what? was in Burning Dog for a while. Yeah, he was uh, when Maury got shot. Oh, we didn't even talk about Maury getting shot. Oh, I, did, I, did, I didn't know if that was off limits. That's oh, why no, I didn't no, bring it's it up. Not, it's not off limits. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it's was a little. The... It was. A, it was a little hard for him to hear, and so to hear us talking. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know if like, yeah, how much he'd want to get into it. But yeah, yeah. he got shot just a few blocks from here. Jesus. He was uh, with some guys, and they shot him, and it went through, like, you know, he's Samoan, so he's got a lot of meat back here. Sure. And it went th- from the from the left side to the right side, but and just above his spine, but under the, under skin. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, so he left town for a little while. Yeah. He went to Virginia with uh, Pika's mom. And then we got, well, we got Robert to play drums for one show. We, our, our, the one time we got to play Laser Star. Mm-hmm. And then Robert moved to. Iowa. That went real good when they sh- they shut down the power. <laughs> yeah, you remember that? That yeah, you talk about getting mad at In Control. That was like, that was two on the scale of you mad at Laser Star. Yeah, that was real Joe Rebus rage. Oh man, I was mad. Yeah, they like they cut like the power, and you know that's bad for your head. Yeah, like you want to like yeah. stuff like that. Shut yeah. it and down. We, we just I just bought that amp, and yeah. so I was like, oh. You're gonna fuck my amp up. And yeah. what was this? What show was this? We, 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 Burning Dog played Laser Star. I don't okay. remember who played with us. I can't remember, but I remember that. Yeah, Adam Han. I think Adam's band. Adam Heckman or Adam Hanlon? H- Hanlon's band. Eyes Full of Rage. Yeah, I think. <laughs> fuck. Was that the only band he was in? Yeah. And they played Laser Star. Uh, yeah. So I think that was it. For some reason, I think Adam played that. They were good, dude. Like for a local band, like did they have recordings. Uh, they never put out a demo. Okay. They recorded, but I don't know what level of song. And, and I could be w- way wrong on that. When Adam hears this, he'll probably say, "No, we didn't fucking play with you. Shut up, old man." Yeah. But, they they had like legitimately like two like. They had hit songs. Mm. Like, just how Whatever It Takes, they had, like, a couple hit songs. Oh, like, they, they, they had, absolutely did. They had Mosh Hard for Oxnard. Oh, dude, that yeah. song ripped. You know? Yeah. And, like, dude. So fast. So good. That's Javi playing drums. Like, oh, yeah. That's yeah. sick beat. He did that He did that beat really good. And. Uh, we recorded that with Armand. Yeah. Did he? 
yeah, yeah. The, the the whatever it takes yeah okay and then yeah the eyes full of rage they had a, a song up because they gave them all these instant shirts because they had all the instant <laughs> instant merch from okay their songs were bring it on that was a good ass song and they did like the weird like uh like the misfits like backwards chord on it it's like do 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 bring it on do 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 bring it on that was good and then they had a song called go fuck yourself two hits so that's a fucking hit dude yeah dude and whatever it takes they have moshar for oxnard and they had like another one that was no the song was called moshnard dude i know it was called but it's like moshing hard for oxnard yeah and that's how uh do you know beavis yeah, well, yeah, yeah, Greg. Uh, his first nickname was Greg It Back because there's that song on the Whatever It Takes demo, I'll Take It Back. Yeah, and uh, Whatever It Takes in control played headline records. And Greg is up front, it's before he was like the main circle pit dude. That's all he does, that's Still. all he does. He's the main circle pit guy. But at the show, this is like before he was circle pit guy, and he's up front and he had the demo. It might have just come out, like people didn't know the songs yet. And they play that song, I'll Take It Back, and it was a good song, but it was like. You know, it's their demo, and it was like too long of a song, and it just kept saying like, "I'll take it back, I'll take it back." Like it went to the chorus like too many times and kind of like yeah, dragged yeah. out a little bit. But every time, fucking, they said that, Greg it back like he fucking felt it, and he went, "I'll take it back, I'll take it back," <laughs> like and like swung his fist every time I'm back. And we had that, we had it on video, so we were watching it. We're just like. Oh shit, like Greg it back, dude. <laughs> uh, so. Leave it to your friends to to come up with the worst <laughs> the worst nicknames for you. Oh, Greg it best. back is yeah. pretty decent. I mean, though. No, I mean it's type. hard. It's good. Yeah. It's good. But I mean, it's I, but it's but it's meant as uh like look, because you're talking shit basically. Well because he's I'm not some, talking shit because it's all in good fun, I'm respecting yeah. anyone that is in the music. Yeah. Like that. Uh, that's like I'm on uh, you know, like the, the the sad crew fucking calling me peg leg because my I had that brace on my knee forever. But that's just rude. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that's or, or rude. Ro- Roger's blinker. Uh, <laughs> What's that? You've never watched Roger eat? No. Watch him eat. Okay. His eye blinks when he chews. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you call I love him blinker? You, Roger. Blinker, yeah. That's so good. I, I'm the only one that does that. And he yeah. hates it. But yeah, I love that's him. That's rude. Yep. Greg It Back is a nicer name than that. It's much nicer let's, than that. Okay. Let's, let's agree on that. Greg It Back, do you feel like you've been well represented at the end of this podcast? I hope so. I hope so, too. I love you, Beavis. I love, I love, I love Beavis. Beavis is a fucking man. All right. All we're right. Out. We're done? Peace.